so this past semester I studied abroad in Cape Town, South Africa, and it was just an amazing experience all around. Uh, both just personally, academically, I thoroughly enjoyed it. For academic reasons, the school I was at, the University of Western Cape, it was a school created under apartheid for black and colored people in South Africa. Uh, and so now it's evolved uh, into a school, but that is definitely very much like the demographic. That's just a very different uh, learning and social environment than Georgetown. Another thing that was mainly, uh, most of the students come uh, from some of the townships in Cape Town, and so a lot of the students are commuters to and from a campus. So it's not the same uh, club culture that's like the main sphere of social life on campus here at Georgetown uh, as it was at the school at the University of Western Cape. And just the, uh, although I was taking the same classes, like history courses and political science courses, as I'm in African American studies and government level major here at Georgetown, uh, taking the same courses at the University of Western Cape was different because of the different experience, the different lived experiences, and the different in, uh, some would even say higher stakes uh, that students at the University of Western Cape brought into the classroom. So maybe for like just very rich discussions uh, about topics that are very applicable, I mean, not uh, just very theoretical and abstract. So I really enjoyed that. And then for personal reasons, it was fulfilling because as a black American, it's been an ongoing quest to trace my ancestral roots to uh, the continent of Africa. So it was a wonderful day, but this is my first time uh, being on the continent. So it was nice being able to return to the continent and travel the continent. Uh, and uh, I feel like it will be a lifelong quest of reconnecting to my ancestors on the continent. So I really enjoyed that. So I definitely recommend studying in South Africa for people who are interested uh, both in studying the history of apartheid and looking at the lasting effects that it has on just the day-to-day -day lives or in a personal interaction. But something I wasn't quite prepared for was the tradition back to Georgetown. Um, I will say, surprising, although I never thought I'd say this, I was really missing Georgetown, missing uh, being back on campus, being back in D.C. by the time that uh, June and July had rolled by, because uh, I'd basically been on campus since uh, the start of freshman year, because I spent the two summers between freshman and sophomore year and sophomore and junior year uh, in D.C. on campus. So I was surprisingly having Georgetown withdrawal, which is something I'd never say, that I'd never say. Um, and so I was definitely looking forward to coming back to Georgetown. Uh, just being back in my element, being back with uh, many of my friends, many of my favorite faculty and staff on campus, uh, because it definitely feels like, I would say, a, a second home that I created uh, outside of my home in Texas, but also outside of the home that I feel like I also forged uh, in the time I was abroad in South Africa. Uh, so I was definitely looking forward to and needing to come back to campus. Also, Georgetown is very fast-paced, and I think that's something that we're familiar with. Um, however, coming from uh, being in South Africa, not having like the outside of school commitments, you're only just having to focus on school, and then having a, uh, a pretty broad and open social life, it's a very different lifestyle of living than I'm living back in Georgetown. And so readjusting that was definitely like a struggle as far as like balancing classes, balancing having to work, balancing different like club involvements and things, and things of that nature. Um, so that was something I definitely struggled with in my first weeks back. Uh, but one way that I have, uh, I guess you could say, got over that is kind of being very intentional about how I manage my time and uh, blocking off um, blocking off free time just for me and things for me to do, catching up with folks. Because being away for so long, a lot of my interaction with folks is catching back up and filling the gaps in like the eight to nine months that we were apart from each other. And so I've, made, I've been very intentional about leaving that time on my schedule. Um, because in South Africa, I felt a, a, a lot of freedom that I really enjoyed. Uh, I, when I was done with classes for the day, I was done with classes for the day, and I really had time for myself, time to socialize, time to explore the city, and so that was something I wanted to bring back with me to George. And although uh, it's not something that I feel like is like typically done, it's something I have to be very intentional about. Also, the general concept of catching up with folks has been a struggle in my transition back to Georgetown because a lot of the interactions are just very like short and brief and past and like, hey, how are you doing? Oh my god, how was abroad? And while it was such an amazing experience, sometimes it's just so hard to put into so few words for uh, sometimes very brief interactions. So being able to uh, one, I think, try to be concise with ex fully expressing uh, my experiences in South Africa and trying to give it justice of like how moving and transformative it was for me has really been a struggle. And so to, I guess, counter that, I think I've uh, 
have been doing is trying to actually be intentional about setting time to talk with folks if they if they if they see the genuine interest I'm like oh let's, let's sit down and talk about it or, oh let's like catch up and meet and share our experience a lot of my friends they also want to bride so I have so many questions for them I want to hear all the stories they have about going abroad so studying abroad was the perfect decision I think for me and in a later video I'll talk more about tips on choosing a place to study abroad how to prepare for studying abroad preparing your application to study abroad uh, but for folks like myself that are transitioning back to campus hope this was helpful as far as like talking about some of the challenges of transitioning back to campus and ways to overcome those challenges I also think there are a lot of great campus resources that can help with the transition back like CAPS uh, CMEA the Center for Multicultural Equity and Access Campus Ministry uh, and many of your the residential living staff around you I think all of these resources can be very helpful in making sure that we have a smoother smoother transition uh, back from setting the bride. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.